Now we're going to move on to the second topic of this section, which is sample size. Now sample size is answering the question of how many, right? How many people do we need to pull? How many tigers do we need to dart and tag? How much candy do we need to buy, right? Stuff like that, right? How many or how much? That's what sample size can answer for us. Now, in particular, for these two formulas, we're going to be talking about for a single proportion. So if we want to estimate a proportion P, how many people or how many things do we need to survey? And the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on a few things. It depends on whether or not we have a prior estimate or not. Do we have some old P hat, right? Some old P hat, which is X over N, supplied by past studies, right? Something from the past that we can use. Or do we not have a prior estimate, right? So no prior estimate, no old P hat. Let me just say old P hat, right? No old P hat for us to use, right, from the past. Then we also want to look at our error, and we want to look at um, how confident we want to be. Okay, so the error is in the denominator of these formulas. You can see it down there, error. Now notice error must be a decimal for these particular types of problems because these are proportions, right? And so error will often be given to you with the words within. So they'll say be, they want to be within 2.5% uh, or something like that. If they say those words, that means that the error is 0 0.025, right? You have to change it to a decimal. Percents are how we talk, right? It's how we um, convert math into English so people can understand it in the language. But it's not useful for formulas, right? The formula has to have the decimal, right? not a percent. So that's that's what's key here. I mean, you can have decimals, um, or you can have whole numbers if you're not in this section, so in th with these two formulas. So not a percent. That's the key part, right? Use decimal. Okay? So you cannot write it as a percent. You have to use it as a decimal instead. All right, then, right, that was that whole piece. Then we also need to know that Q hat is 1 minus p hat. We've already learned that. Well, technically we learned it in chapter 6 and it's come back to haunt us in this chapter. All right, so let's look at an example and then we'll see these um, two formulas applied. Suppose a researcher wants to know what, prop what proportion of U.S. college students do not have health insurance. How many college students would the research need to poll if, and then we have it with different things. But notice the question word right there, how many. That's a giant red flag that this is a sample size question. If you see those words, that's sample size. Okay, so let's look. The researcher wants to be 95% confident within a 3% margin of error. Wonderful. And I don't see any old study, right? There's no other information up here. There's no old, like back in the past, it was this percentage that's not here. So that means we have no prior estimate. So this one is a no prior estimate for p hat. Okay, so that means that our formula is the no prior estimate formula. It's going to be n equals 0.25 times c alpha over 2 over the error squared. All right, now let's do the substitution. These can be a little tricky because they say formula substitution result just like confidence interval problems did, but they work differently. So this is 0.25 times. All right, now we have to do a little bit of work here. The error. They said right here they want it to be within, there's that magic word, 3% margin of error. So the error is 0 0.03. So that's going to be the denominator. It's 0 0.03. And don't forget you're squared out here. A lot of people do. Don't do that. All right, now we need Z. 
otherwise we can't proceed any further. So we need the z that would go in the numerator. To get the z, that's a critical value. So the critical z, right, we already know how to find those. That's with stat calculators normal. All right, so let's go find that. So we have a 95% confidence. So let me go pull up StatCrunch. All right, here's StatCrunch. So stat, calculators, normal. Critical Z values are as always two of them. So we click between. And over here, we're going to put our confidence level. We learned how to do this in section 9.1. So our confidence level was 0.95. And we say compute, and we get 1.96. Okay, so 1.96, right? So we put the C level of 0.95 in, right? And that's going to get us our 1.96. And now we're actually just going to type that in to Desmos, right? Desmos is our calculator, so let me pull Desmos. All right, 0 0.25 times parentheses. 1.96 divided by 0 0.03. Now, don't forget to square it. So go after the parentheses, close your parentheses. And to do squareds, right, you either hit the A squared button in your palette, right there, or 0 0.25 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.03. Carrot. There's a button, um, if you hit your shift button, and then 6, there's a carrot symbol. It looks like a little, I don't know, carrot. <laughs> it's an accent circumflex in French. Here, I pulled it up on Google. <laughs> so the carrot symbol, it looks like that, right? It's above your six button, and that's going to stand, it's C-A-R-E-T, carrot is what it stands for. And it stands for upper, right? So you're going to put it, it looks like that, it, right? So if you hit shift six, it'll raise it and then to the two power to the two. So it should be up high and it looks like that. So either way we get 1067.1. Be careful. I'll just say one more thing about this. This is not the same thing as timesing by two. If you accidentally don't hit the caret button, you see how that two is a little bigger and kind of in the same line as the division bar? That's not good. That's multiplying by two. That's not what we want. We want it raised to the two. It's a little smaller and a little higher up, right? Okay, so that's just a common mistake people make. All right, so we get 1067. So this is our result right here. So our result is the 1067, but we can't leave it like that. We have to round up, right? These are college students, and I hate to break it to you, but you can't have 0.1 of a college student. And this is one case, this is the one time where we must round up to the nearest whole number, right? You cannot round down. You can't do normal rounding here. Because if you do, you will lose the confidence or the error that you were looking for. This is literally the floor. You can go no lower than this. That point one matters. So you have to go 1068 students. round up. Actually, I just wrote that in a different color. I wanted it to pop out, so I'm just putting a star next to it. Okay, now we're going to do it all again, but this time we're going to change our margin of error. Look what's happening. The margin of error is now going to be 4%. So we're going to see what happens when you raise your error. What does that do to your sample size? So let's see. So the formula is going to be the same. We still have no prior estimate. So no prior estimate still. So that means that the formula is n equals 0.25 times z alpha over 2 over the error squared. Oop, that's a Z. My Z looks weird. All right, then the confidence didn't change. So for the substitution step, it's still 0.25. And it's still 1.96, right? Because the confidence is the same. Confidence the same 
So Z is 1.96 still, right? Confidence affects that numerator number, right? But we left it at 95, so we're good. But now the error is going to change. So 0 0.04, and don't forget to square it, that little 2. It's super, super easy to drop, but you don't want to drop it. Okay, so let me go back to Desmos, and let me change that denominator number. I'm actually going to leave this one up here, and I'm going to change this one so you can see the difference. Look at what happened. Less error, right? This is a smaller error here, bigger number. Bigger error, right? 0.04 is bigger error, more error, and a smaller number. Isn't that interesting? So it was 600, right? So this is our result over here. It was 600.25, which we round up, always round up, to 601 students. And we want to remind ourselves to round, so I'm just going to put that right here. Round up. The rest of the course, we always do regular rounding, except for these problems. <laughs> Sample size problems round up. Everything else is normal rounding, except for these ones. All right, let's take a moment and think about this right now. What happened? When our error went up, our sample size went down. That's because errors in the denominator. So it has an inverse relationship here. So increasing the error made sample size. Right, so this is error. Sample size is n decreased. Right? They have an inverse relationship. So let me put them on a teeter-totter. Right? So here's what's happening. If error's on one side and sample size is on the other, when the error went up, right, we raised it from 0.03 to 0.04, the n went down. And the way to say that is that e and n have an inverse relationship. We learned that word back in chapter 4. And if you want to just note, um, how do we know this? This is comparing A and B, right? The answers for A and B was how we could see this was happening, right? So as my error increased, my N decreased. And for the record, it works in the opposite direction as well. If your error goes down, then your N will go up. Okay, now let's look at C. C has this 2016 study that found that 8.6% of U.S. college students did not have health insurance. Now how many people would we want to survey? Ah, okay. So look, look, look. This 8.6% from 2016, that's an old study and an old P hat. All right, with a prior P hat. Let's put it that way. The prior, prior means in the past. Prior P hat was 0 0.086. All right, so now we can use that, right? So that means that our formula, right, because we know this, the formula is going to be the other formula, the one on the left, the one that's P hat times Q hat. All right, so let me write it out. P hat times Q hat z alpha over 2 over the error squared. Substitution. Okay. p hat is 0 0.086. Right? q hat, hold on, I'll figure that out in a second. All right, what confidence and what error do we have? We had a 3% margin of error. Again, so we're back to 3%. So error is 0 0.03. And then we had a 95% confidence again, right? We, didn't, we never changed the confidence in these ones. I will do that in a later video. So that means that I'm still 1.96. So the confidence is um, same. So it's still um, Z is 1.96, right? 1.96 because the confidence was the same, right, every time, same. Okay, 
So then what about Q? Well, remember that Q is 1 minus P, right? Q hat is 1 minus P hat, which is 1 minus 0 0.086, which is 0.914. So this is 0.914 right here. Right, we learned that formula many times over. Okay, so now we just have to go stick the whole thing into Desmos. All right. So instead of the 0.25 in front, I'm going to write 0 0.086 times 0.914, parentheses, 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, because that was our margin of error, close my parentheses, and then square it. I hit the A squared button, and we get 335.5. So that's our result. It's 335.5. So then we round up to 336 students. Now, take a moment and think about this. This had the same confidence and the same error as letter A. So if you look at letter A, 1.96.03, 1.96.03. So they had the same confidence and same error, but the difference was letter A had no prior estimate, so we used this 0.25 in the front, and letter C did have a prior estimate, 0 0.086. So we used that value right here. Now what, look what happened. It drastically reduced. Having a prior estimate greatly lowered the sample size. So that's what we're going to note here. Having a prior estimate lowers the sample size. by a lot, right? So to do this, we would compare A and C, right? If you look at those two, having a prior estimate for P, having some old P hat, that's all this is. This is just fancy words for an old P hat from the past. That's all it means. Just having some clue as to where the proportion should be means you have a much lower sample size 